We can talk about it later, too. Okay. Hey, hey. It's working. It's working. All right. Um, yeah. Hey. Hey. Someone in the chat say if they can hear Patrick, because I think I have it figured out. <laughs> but I am I'm an artist, Jim. Not a streaming professional. I, can anyone hear anybody? Can you hear me? In the stream? The beauty of Oh, there's there we go. Yay. Right. <laughs> cool. People can hear us. Sweet. That, that puts me at such ease you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing today, Kyle? Well, kind of whatever. We, uh, Nick suggested I do the card backs for the Shellfire rebellion mm -hmm. which are the turts so i might do that for a minute all right i'm gonna go to twitter and retweet or x i'm sorry i will never call it that i'll never call it that. <laughs> it was a word in the english language to tweet no one no one thought you were standing around sounding like a bird we knew what you're doing yeah unless you're you know not tech savvy but and not even tech savvy barely tech savvy but instead, we're going to plow over all that progress. Anyway, he didn't come here for my opinions. <laughs> I did. Maybe I don't did. know why everyone else is here, but yeah, you're here for my you're here for my hot takes. <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little uh, a little worked up right now. Anyway, so this is gonna be it's gonna be the hottest. Okay. Mm -mm. I I have a. Is your phone influence. on a piece of glass right now? It isn't. I actually have this bar thing now. <laughs> Uh, before I had literally like two board games and then a piece of poster, um, like poster frame glass that I would just set my phone on top of. But I got this bar thing that I think works better. It's still a little jiggly, but who among so us? So we've been isn't playing. Uh, we've been playing. Uh, Spirit or Spirit on. Someone said Spirit on in chat, and then it took over my brain. I can't. I'm sorry. When's the last time you played Spirit Island, Kyle? Uh, I literally have never played Spirit Island. Uh, oh my god! I I'm know. I know you. You love it. I've seen people play uh, it at conventions and stuff. We've talked. So we're uh, we're we're uh, we're playing Gloomhaven in the office. We've gotten through three scenarios. We died in the third one. Um. And uh, uh, Alita has this little um, this frame that she just leaves down there where we set her iPhone. Because we've we've let the iPhone take care of all the managing the creatures oh. now, <laughs> um, so you could get that. But you, it sounds like you have it in hand, so it's all good. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little worked up today because a lot of stuff that I won't talk about on stream. <laughs> I just worked up the realities of being a parent. <laughs> Yeah, it's parenting. It's having parents. It's uh, sometimes working at a you know working with other people's hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Patrick's here to air his grievances about me specifically. I'm, You're I'm basically to, here yes. for my employee evaluation, your performance review. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's how we did it? <laughs> uh, you uh, you have to listen to your to Kyle's performance review. Get ready, strap in, everybody. It's going to be a clip episode. Um, kind of running into the thing. Cole's neck. <laughs> I'm kind of running into the issue sure. that we uh, sometimes do when uh, we talked about doing turtles for Root, um, which they is that it's, pants. It's, it's, hard, kind of it's hard to give them clothes because, like, the shell is a part of their body. They don't put clothes on inside the shell. 
I don't know. But the rules are a little bit different for Ahoy, so they can just be naked with a sash. That's no big deal. Mm -hmm. A belt is plenty. I, uh, it is no issue with anyone in particular. <laughs> You're trying to muckrake in the, in the chat? In the... You're not going to get me to talk. <laughs> oh. What kind of sword are you drawn? Uh, a big hacking sword that has, like, jingly rings on the back for intimidation slash mangling purposes. But You're like, I'm not going to fight that guy. He's so rich, he's got rings yeah. on his sword. I'll make him a little bit scarred, too. This is a planner guy. Let's see. Should we do another one? Yeah, there should be a couple of turtles going on here. Maybe, yeah, maybe Ninja Turtles is inspiring my my belt is enough decision here. Everyone wore, wore red in the original comics. They did. Mm -hmm. They were actually pencil drawings. Yep. With no coloring. And they were. Yeah, anyway. They were hard to But the covers, out. they always had red sashes to make them look more ninja y. Have you seen um, the new Ninja Turtles movie? I'm not. I heard it's really good. I heard it's you good like too. It? I haven't seen it yet either. I follow uh, Woodrow White, I think his name is on uh -huh. Instagram, who did a lot of the character design, which is probably one of the most like things that separates it from a lot of the other Ninja Turtles movies. I like that they gave uh -huh. Johnny glasses. Uh huh. That he kind of stuck to his guns on there. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, the color was from the first kids show because they wanted to help obviously you can't have four animated characters the thing you can't redesign <laughs> wasn't, wasn't, wasn't going to work for kids do you want to hear my favorite <laughs> uh, Ninja Turtles anecdote uh, yeah let's hear it Okay, my favorite Ninja Turtles anecdote is uh, a few years ago the um, the Ninja Turtles on Nickelodeon let's see that yeah. would have been like Six or no, it would have been like almost ten years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but uh, we lost that COVID time. Yeah, the voice of Yakko from Animaniacs, Rob Paulson, uh, did the voice of Donatello. Uh -huh. uh, and in the original Ninja Turtles animated show, Rob Paulson did the voice of Raphael. Oh, crazy! Uh, and then like Sean uh, Aston was Raphael in. In this one, anyway, it had a lot of kind of big names in it for mm. being a show on Nickelodeon. And then, um, the guy who played, uh, yeah, so Rob Paulson was Donnie in one and Raph in the older one. And then he did kind of like a throwback alternate dimension episode where he did both voices and he kind of like looked at his own character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hmm, that's great, you, you sound weird, but. Uh. Let's see. Let's I, like, I like that joke when they pull it off. Like you see that once in a while. So mm -hmm. I watched. Uh, uh, I just, we've been watching um, Ashoka, the Star oh Wars yeah, series. Mm -hmm. series. Um, my wife and I, and I, I find the story really compelling. I don't like. Um, but the you know it's all based on the cartoon. It's like a continuation of the of, of the, the Clone Wars cartoon. Yeah. Or rebels. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, and uh, uh, the I didn't know that it's the guy who plays Thrawn played Thrawn in the cartoon also. I believe if I read that correctly. Huh. Someone, someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that. On that, which I'm a, sure a Star will. Wars fan would correct you on the inconsistency. Uh, so. <laughs> I say that with all the love in my heart. Yeah. I find I I like the story. I think the there are clearly people trying to act in front of green screens most of the time, and so it's a little mm. it's a little frustrating sometimes. Uh -uh. 
Like Ian McKellen weeping in front of a green screen energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big big that energy. They uh I think the probably the worst defender for that, uh and maybe I hope I haven't already talked about this. I can't keep track of what I've talked about on stream, but um was Jupiter Ascending. Mm-hmm. Jupiter Ascending, I could not get over the feeling that they didn't show any of the actors what they were gonna add in post. Or where they were standing or who they oh, were yeah, with. Well, or, yeah. it wasn't even that. It was just like the reactions. Because it would yeah. be like a dinosaur dragon alien guy smashes through the ceiling of your house and demands the presence of somebody you know. And like everybody looks at him kind of like, oh man, we would have ordered more pizza if we knew somebody was... <laughs> like <laughs> like nobody... <laughs> like there's any, there isn't any kind of alarm or... Or anything, uh, and then there's like this huge segment where, um, the main character Jupiter falls out of a building, and then side character Dogman Channing Tatum, uh, yeah. flies around with rocket boots and avoids spaceship gunfire and and all that stuff for a while, and it's like generously a ten minute segment of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and then later they're driving and she's like, Thanks for catching me when I fell. And it's like, Holy cow, that was that's the biggest understatement. <laughs> <laughs> and flying like, through that, like, and Explosions. like probably yeah. you weren't a real person for any of that s- space of the movie or CGI. Uh and there wasn't a lot of voice acting for that part probably. It was just yeah. whoa, whoa, but anyway, I really thought that was funny. That and um, Eddie Redmayne, Fantastic uh-huh. Beats Guy, Beast Guy, is one yeah. of the main bad guys. Um, and I really think that unless you're in a movie theater, you really can't hear him at all. Oh sure, <laughs> like he's do he made some choices. Yeah, with his uh, voice. Make him seem very intense and also totally unintelligible. <laughs> let's talk about uh, let's Any- talk about studio stuff, right? Yeah, anything besides probably, Jupiter ascending. People are probably here for the studio stuff. So how's our how's wrapping up arcs going? It's going and good. This, We're getting close. By the close. way, for some of you, this will be the first time I hear some of this, so like, uh, I'm yeah, teasing. yeah, um, it's going good. I'm on the final. Maybe fifty percent of the campaign card art, but all mm-hmm. of the um, all of the art for the base game is done. Um, all of the cover art for the expansion stuff is done, and uh, yeah, it's really just some cards that I'm working on right now, and that's kind of that's kind of it. So um, cool. yeah, it's it's. It's fun. It's a big project. Arcs might be the biggest thing we've ever made. Would you? Oh, would you say that? I I, uh, I think Cole and I did kind of a, a a preliminary chat about it, and I won't give numbers, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's by far our largest project. <laughs> yeah, which is saying something because yeah. Oath yeah. is massive. All of yeah. the root stuff together is massive. It's massive. Yeah, yeah, for but, sure. But Arcs is its own thing and i'm excited for people to get to play it so yeah we uh yeah we're gonna be at pax unplugged soon with some of that stuff to show off and we're gonna have ahoy stuff to show off all we had at um gen con for the new ahoy content was a sign that was like hey you should follow this qr code and back us on backer kit when you're ready and um, so, the sign yeah. was like this ongoing struggle <laughs> that alita and i kept trying to get it to stand up and at first we were just like missing a key piece of how the sign holder worked uh-huh. but even after that it was like do not touch the sign no one go by the sign <laughs> please stay over here in relation to the sign mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no but arc stuff is wrapping up sweet we're all working super hard. All the dev people working super hard. It's been funny to see in the company Slack people to say, um, like, hey, 
Can we have any playtesters to play ARCs like all the time and people are happy to join in and jump in and I just look at it like Chandler with his hand on the draining glass like, oh, I wish I didn't have so much stuff to do <laughs> that I could jump in on the playtest <laughs> too. But, no, oh, it's fun. But a lot of that, uh, a lot of a lot of my role in arcs will be done um, um, by the end of this week or Thanksgiving. You know, it'll be, and then it's that weird situation where the making it happens, and I kind of won't think about it except with just fond memories and anticipation until it becomes the the thing that we have in person. So, but that's the, the nature of being in a. I guess kind of a publishing business, right? Is it just like yeah. the stuff that you're selling is the stuff that you haven't worked on in a year, uh, yeah. and the stuff that you're working on is stuff that you won't you won't see for another and year. And you want to like stand and screaming at people when you're at a convention, but you're like, well, I better talk about the thing we're making right now. Yeah, so. yeah. Hey, I'm kind of working on some goofy ideas right now. I didn't want to hear them. Cool. Come into come with me into this closet, and I will show you this game that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> or I'll explain the cool idea. I'll show you the parking lot. <clears throat> Someone complimented your jazz jersey. Thank you. Go jazz. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. I'll <laughs> say for that person. <laughs> the best place to so, get jazz. And, uh, so how are you feeling about Costco. Ahoy? Working on some new art right now. I'm excited. I'm excited for the Leviathan stuff, especially. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for the um, Coral Cat Pirates. I haven't played uh, but they're exciting to me and just the, the main thing i'm excited for is just what i think is kind of the understated thing of the backer kit which is that there's like 30 different 30 plus different combinations of roles you can play now like uh -huh. of, of factions because before with the original ahoy which i loved you're kind of shoot into always playing bluefin and um the mollusk unit um and that that's fine but it just means that if you're teaching the game i'm pretty much always playing one of those uh mm -hmm. just statistically <laughs> and uh, i really like being a smuggler uh and so it'll be fun to open up more options uh, and get to play Smuggler more often, to get to have uh, some other kind of piratey roles to play. Um, when we were working on Ahoy originally, I wanted to make sure that I got kind of the anatomy of a sailboat, a sailing ship, correctly. Yeah. Uh, so I could... I mean, there's still it's still kind of a fantasy space, but... Uh, I wanted to make sure that, like, I wasn't putting a sail on backwards or, you know, something, something like that, because I think nautical sailing ship people are only going to be outdone by like horse anatomy. St or Star stick Wars stickler people. <laughs> sticklers, uh, and so I just wanted to make sure. So I watched so much pirate stuff when I was yeah. working on Ahoy, and not just pirate stuff, like ocean stuff I watched all uh, the got mini series of horatio hornblower at cole's request and and i don't know it's fun i just like all the treasure island i don't know just kind of everything about all those types of movies and properties and i think one of the things i like best about ahoy is how piratey it feels mm -hmm. like you could literally just load up your cannons and go around and attack people and rob them and try and you know or, or you can sneak around or whatever and there's lots of different um ways to do it but it feels very piratey you know it's not a pirate themed game that's secretly a euro game or a pirate themed game that's just a bluffing game or whatever yeah like i love um we really like playing what is it called skull king I almost called it Mormon Bridge, um, but we. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I really, we really like playing Skull King, and um, but that is a game where the theme of pirates 
is fun but not like super crucial to how the game works right um and and that's one way that ahoy has a leg up on games like that where it's like there's no getting around being a pirate in in this game even when we first looked at um the game from greg Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was space themed. It was still about smuggling, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't think you can really separate that from the the gameplay. So I forgot to ask Nick and Cole to vet the how Ahoy got vetted story in my last update. Um, so I hope it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a bit of I was having a bit of a day Tuesday, or that was yesterday even. Yeah, that that went up. Um, I. Uh, had a sick kid at home. I had to take care of him. So. Yeah, I got one at home. Staying home yeah. sick today. So, uh, so brass knuckles. And he doesn't look as chipper as he did in pencil. I like the, I like the <laughs> brass knuckles. It's good. He doesn't look as chipper? Like he was looking yeah, more Yeah, I thought he was heart. smiling. I thought he was, I thought he was grinning. Yeah. So. He's a little smiley. So, I, I can give him yeah. eyebrows. Everybody knew. I think you'll give him funny eyebrows. <laughs> I'm changing the course of the game right here. Oh no! Sorry. The theme. Sorry, everybody. The theme. Arr. More theme. Oh, Muppet Treasure Island. Someone asked about that. That is a movie yeah. that my kids will not watch with me because I will quote the entire thing, including background uh, music. Oh boy! I watched Muppet Treasure Island so much as a kid uh, that. Yeah, it's insufferable. I could probably that's the rest of the stream now. I'm just gonna start from the beginning and do to start my, playing my, it. No, the window. Island. Yeah. No, I'm just gonna do it. I'm not even gonna play it on the thing. I'm just gonna do all the parts, background music, <laughs> accents, everything. I uh I wonder if I can get uh if how far I could get into I'd have to I'd have to refresh her watching. I think I watched the Muppet movie probably twenty times as a kid, maybe thirty or forty. Just so many, over and over and over. Mm-hmm. When we first got Cable, that was like the first movie we could find. And we just kept watching it over and over and over. <laughs> and then eventually we got it. Mm-hmm. I can still sing all the songs. I will not bless you all with my rendition of... Um, that. What's I can't remember what the first song's called. But I still sing it a lot. I still sing the cheese version from uh, The Muppet Caper. We had... Um... Where, to kind of bring it all home here we only had one ninja turtles thing growing up and it was kind of the same situation where it was like it was a vhs and it was the easter episode uh and so ninja turtles are always associated with easter in my mind but that's just I like this this very uh secular thing of uh-huh. <laughs> a turtle mutated into a human uh-huh. i saw i saw a meme the other day where it's like are you guys telling me you got your butts handed to you by a bunch of adult mutant ninja turtles? And the, <laughs> and the guy says, it's worse than that, boss. <laughs> that was, uh, that, it, the role-playing game's back on Kickstarter, too, the TMNT role-playing game. Oh, I didn't know that one of the biggest disconnects for me from like, oh, this will be fun, and then I start reading the game, and it's as serious as a funeral, and I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> it's really, it's dark like the comic was, uh-huh. and it's like, yeah, you're experimenting on animals, and it's horrible, and you're one of those animals, and you're like, oh, alright. That's neat, so. <laughs> uh, Nick asks you, how do you feel about Treasure Planet? I like Treasure Planet. I hadn't seen it until recently. I was in college when it came out, and I was poor. So I like it. I kids, think kids um, made me watch it. Most weirdly attractive version of Captain Smollett. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure Planet as a kid was like the 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 meme from Community. The oh, I hope this doesn't awaken anything in me. <laughs> Someone knew what they were doing. Some yeah yeah oh, some blessed yeah. blessed furry but. classic uh so in case none of you knew this i think more so anybody at the company colonized love language is memes that we send each other all day 
Yeah. Yep. And sometimes at night. If I and see sometimes some, at night. If I see something <laughs> stupid enough that I think Patrick will like this. Or vice versa. Mm-hmm. I don't I saw, I don't even know what comic was I just sent you. But it do was you know, the I mean, one you know what the Yeah, it was the the, the goose one. Yeah, but who's the cartoonist? Uh I don't know. Oh, I recognize it. I just can't remember who it was. <clears throat> so and then I sent memes to my other coworkers and they're like, uh okay. <laughs> Patrick sends me memes and then I send him memes immediately right back. Yeah, there's uh, we're ready. Yeah, sometimes. See, and I have a couple friends who have trained me for that. I have one, a friend named uh, named Eric, who, if uh, someone sends a joke, like if we think of a good riff on the joke, we have to act on it immediately, even if there's spelling <laughs> errors, so the other one of us doesn't get to the joke first. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's just kind of become a joke unto itself. And uh, so today when Cole said that, like, I'm flying to Dallas, I was like, on my computer trying to find that picture of the guy in the airport with the whole bunch of cowboy hats on. And he's looking at another guy with a cowboy hat on. And the caption is like, he's eyeing his next victim or something. And I like had that picture locked and loaded. (laughs) I had it locked and loaded. And Cole posted this follow up picture, which was two guys on an airplane with cowboy hats in front of him. And I was like, oh, it's even more relevant now. I'm acting on on that and that'll be the sort of uh, thing that like my uh my kids will be like uh, about when they get uh, there, but. <laughs> but i thought my comment was good too it was <laughs> and we're not going to tell anybody what the comments were no yeah sp sends me a few memes here and there and I send him anything Shrek related I see on the internet because I think that's what he likes. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know if it's what SP likes, but cool. Uh, this is turning out pretty good. I'm enjoying this this drawing. Funny. Have I told you I like how you draw? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> when uh, so can I make this? Can I make this a little more awkward for you? No, for the the concern uh, about sending someone memes about something you think they like but you're not sure. When I graduated from high school, we were signing yearbooks, and this kid named Jeff came up to me and said, "Will you sign my yearbook, Kyle?" And I said, "Sure." And I grabbed his yearbook and I opened it, and it just said, "Dylan, Dylan, have a good summer, Dylan." And I was like, "Hold up, Jeff, you got somebody else's um, yearbook." And he was like, no, my name is Dylan. And I was like, oh. (laughs) And he's like, and I said, but I called, I say, hey, Jeff, and like all the time. And he was like, yeah, I don't know where you got Jeff from, but I just sort of let you do that for like two years. (laughs) And so this poor kid named Dylan that I called Jeff for like two years of high school, and he never corrected me, and we didn't have enough other interactions or anything else for somebody else to be like that guy's name is not jeff um i i it's like he's he's at a therapist's office right now today (laughs) man i was really bullied and and uh let me tell you how bad it was i was nothing if not friendly it was just (laughs) just funny it reminds me of uh on that archer tv show how he is always saying (laughs) highway to the danger zone and then Uh, and I can't remember. It's like an engagement party or anniversary or something, and he just goes nuts trying to get Kenny Loggins to come to the party, so uh-huh. so he can sing "Highway to the Danger Zone" because he thinks it'll be like this great thing that their friendship is founded on. And then when mm-hmm. the other character Lana yeah. sees it, she's like, "Uh," and he's like, "It's Kenny Loggins," and he's like, "What?" And he's like, you know, "Danger Zone," and she goes, "Is that from a song?" <laughs> it's like yep i like that show i haven't seen it in a while i kind of like the idea i've caught up with it though i've watched all the way through i just think h john benjamin's cutting cards i think so what is uh screaming voice is his his greatest asset so what is what 
so a quick aside, my brother works in a uh, film and he edits for a living. And he, uh, whenever we watch it together, he's like, he was like really excited about how well they step on each other's lines. So it's like, they have to be doing a table read. And then we watch them making a feature about Archer and they are reading in booze. So he's like, well, that's uh, that's all editing at this point. Like they're doing a fantastic job bringing that show together then. Um, question for Patrick and Kyle. What do you think are the most important qualities in a board game artist? <clears throat> Can I give you the super boring answer? I I know I know what my answer is, and I think my answer is pretty boring too. Uh and the art gets people to buy the game. <laughs> I uh I mean that's really that's what I would say. That that if um I don't know. When I was in school for visual communication, we talked about, you know, what is the goal of a movie poster? Because it was, you know, 2010, and and people were saying like the the, the whole minimal movie poster thing got really popular. So yeah. it was like, here's a movie poster of Back to the Future, and it's like this cool minimal thing showing which lines are like future, past, and stuff. And my professor showed it to us and was like this is garbage <laughs> because no one would see this movie poster and be like i want to see that movie and the whole point of the movie poster is to get people to see it and it's like and if you lose that in, in your goal then you can make it formally nice you can make it you know look really cool but functionally it's to get butts in seats and uh i think in much the same way with board game art, I want it to enhance the experience and give people like a fun way to interact with an object that I, I hope is art. But essentially, my job is to get you to give Patrick a try, or to get <laughs> or to give Cole's work a try, uh, and then when you play it, and you're like, "Oh, this is really good." Then you'll then you'll share it with other people, and a game with good art is easy to get other people to play too. If you have a game that you really like but looks boring, I think everybody in the chat can sympathize with like, hey, let's play this. And people are like, is it just about dirt? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> it's really fun. And it's like, oh, but the theme looks boring or the, the art looks boring. And then and then it's a harder sell. So my my job is to try and make it an easier sell. What What sure. is your... Not as what is your boring answer? What was oh my even more boring is that like <clears throat> I have worked with some very talented people over the years, and Kyle is the most talented I've worked with. But um, but he also like had the opportunity to get better. I'll say as diplomatically as I can. Um, and I think the um, to me it is like communication and like timeliness like i don't like honestly i don't care if you're late i mean i do in a we got to get this to china like sense but like yeah. <clears throat> but there's should be enough padding in the project that that's not a big deal anyway um and yeah, that's you know, a management failing if i'm late, yeah, that's, that's somebody else's fault no no that's, that's all good <laughs> But like I would, I had so many projects when I was an amateur or a freelancer that I was working on early on, where like you would give someone a list of things to do and be like, "Can you prioritize and manage this yourself?" Yep, no problem. I've done this before. Okay, and then you'd call them in like two weeks and be like, "I haven't seen any art from you yet." And if you were, if you'd done something, I think you'd be proud of it and put it on Twitter or show it to me right now. Since I haven't seen anything, I'm just gonna assume there isn't anything to show yet. And then, you know, sure enough, they'd be like, yep, nothing to show yet. And they'd be like, well, why not? And be like, well, I lost the spec or I lost, you know, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not, I want you to work on this project. That is why you are here. I'm not going to get mad at you if you lost the spec and came and told me right away. That's yeah. fine. I mean, I might be a little bit like, well, maybe you need to put this in a safer get, place. Get your act together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But at least you didn't waste two weeks not working on the project. And um, and I, I just had so many times where things like that would happen. And Kyle has never done anything like that. So um, so that, to me, it's about, it's about the communication. And it's about, it's it's not about being timely. It's about 
knowing that if you aren't going to, if you are going to have trouble with your time, then you have to be able to communicate that problem to people. So that's my really boring CEO managerial answer. Um, but I think to Kyle's credit, like when we, when we publish Vast and we publish Root, I think both are good games. Um, and I think the, but I think the, art is part of what keeps people coming back and i think it's what makes it timeless um i think for, especially for root being timeless and i think that's really i think that's a very important part of the very important part of the story and then I, I also you know i think that like i think a lot of art and i think this is part of the ai discussion is that like a lot of people see art as like a liability you have to fill at the end and just mm -hmm. just paste it on to make the game look pretty or to make the game minimally presentable like if you think about a chess set as not having any any art anymore because it's all, it's all we have ground out we know what a bishop looks like at this point we don't need mm -hmm. to redesign the bishop um and and like if you could present like i think some designers might present a game that simply and that's fine i actually kind of like think sometimes it'd be cool to do that as, as a design experiment but also like i think the the way the representative like the way that the art is used represents the pieces so well in Vast and in Root that it's important for them to be there. Just as important. So you can't, you cannot be pasted in at the end. You have to be part of the discussion about how the game's going to come together. And I, I think that's really, really important for us. I mean, you and I right now, I have an outstanding project with you right now where you're going to work on the, you're going to help me fill in some of the theme questions for Block, and uh, which is becoming a timelier concern. Uh, so <laughs> I've been waiting for you to get down with arcs, and I, you know, I think it's important to have you in right now because I think that's I think the way you want to answer that question is part of how I'm going to work around uh, some of the problems I'm having with the game. So, uh, it, I'm going to stop rambling for a minute. Okay. Um, was that not a pencil? I thought it was a pencil sketch, but the eraser would have gotten rid of it, right? Or you have some sort of special eraser technique? Uh... I think you just erased awfully. Yeah, so I draw, this is um, just regular sketchbook paper that I really like the texture of because it gives me a little bit of ink bleed and it gives me uh, the pens I use dry on it really fast. This is just a Prismacolor 01. Um, and then uh, the pencil I use is this uh, like super hard lead drafting pencil, the kind that just has like the really like big stick of lead on the inside um, and I basically never sharpen this I, I just keep it super dull and um, I draw with it to do the sketches and then because it's super hard it erases really easily without smudging um, so I'll do a little bit of a uh, erase after a sketch so I can ink on top of it where I can still see but then after I do the final inking or sometimes even before I get the brush pen out, if I know there's going to be a lot of brush pen work, I'll erase the rest of it. And that just makes it so when I scan it for coloring that the pencil lines don't show up in case I want to. With a lot of the arcs stuff, um, I would actually get to that stage and then I would add um, pencil on top of it just to sort of give it a grittier texture. But all the Ahoy items are um, don't have any pencil in the final product. There you go. Sometimes uh, somebody asked, do I color on the paper? Uh, yes, but not for work. Uh, and that's just because uh, I'm trained watercolor painting and I'm trained to, and I, you know, I like coloring with my kids and, and everything, colored pencils, watercolors and things, but uh, coloring on the computer is just so much faster for me. And it's really easy to iterate and get into the weeds with color choices, um, make things colorblind friendly, etc. Um, because if you make a mistake watercoloring, you got to start over. There's no undo, there's no white out. There, I mean, it's soaked into the paper. <laughs> so, yeah. so you can't really fix it. Um, and uh, I mean, so I draw with ink and I guess you could say the same thing about ink, but um, yeah, that's just, I, I color digitally uh, and I use some watercolor kind of simulated methods to sort of get a similar end result. But um, 
What I'll also yeah. say I like about Kyle's as an illustrator versus other people that I've seen on the market is that like even these characters now, like the turtle in front is tense. He's waiting. He's gonna do something. He's tense or he's being intimidating. It's fine. That's I can interpret that. But he's not just standing ramrod straight, looking straight ahead. Like he's got a pose to him. The next guy looks like he's about to do some violence or he's getting really excited. Um, you know, and then the and then that yeah, that third guy is fighting a coin. He's not trusting someone. There's something about the pro the current conversation that's not going how he thinks it's gonna go. So and I you know, so every little bit of you know, this is just picking up on what Nick said. It's like every little bit that he draws is telling a little bit of a story, even if it's not related to the action that's going on right now. Well, and hopefully, I mean, some of that is subconscious that I just do that, but that's what my um, background is in college was I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Visual Communication because illustration, different than like um, fine art, I guess you could say, yeah. is about communicating pretty literally <laughs> and um sometimes you can get the deeper meaning stuff in there but i mean a deeper meaning meaning doesn't sell a can of coke <laughs> what if it did <laughs> now we're getting really deep but i mean good good design is uh and good illustration by an extension is function first. So whenever um, the, the way we do uh, things at work when Cole has a, like for arcs for Cole has a bunch of card art he needs me to do. He will give me a list of what the cards do more or less. Um, instead of telling me what he wants on the card. So instead of saying, draw a spaceship with a guy standing on it, holding a stick with a cat, etc., etc., he'll just say, hey, this is a card that's called this, and it does this. And then I get to interpret what that means, and that gives me the opportunity to sort of inject the little funny moments or things that I think are good. I did, um, I'll just show it. I think right that's good. Skeletons to me is the best example of that. Yeah, because I had written up all the equipment for the skeletons, and then I was like, "We might actually cut the equipment still." And they're like, "Well, that's fine. It just gives me notes on how to draw each skeleton," which he then proceeded to do. So, so this is um, this is a card for arcs that's called uh, "Faithful Disciples," and uh, it it basically lets you do actions that aren't in the game normally if you're playing this certain role. Uh, and so instead of making it like some guys in robes who look like faithful disciples, I made it someone who's like very clearly using mind control on another <laughs> another guy who looks alarmed. And I think that's funny. I do that to entertain myself, but hopefully that gives people something to smile about when they're when they're playing the game. But that's someone asked on Twitter or something way in the way back about. Um, how I made some of the decisions about what to illustrate for Oath. And the answer is, I just draw something funny that I can think of. So it, if you have a card that says portals, and it lets you move from one place to another, then the portal I'm going to draw is a big scary looking portal with a guy jumping into it. And another guy looking at the portal like, I'm not going to hop in. <laughs> I'm not going to hop in the portal. And the, and the third guy being and, like, and the yeah, wizard, come on. And the wizard pointing like, get in the hole. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Let's do it. Yeah, and I like that. I just think it's it tells a little a little story. But. Man. Uh, someone asked, what kind of music do you like there? Um, Like every kind of music i i sometimes worry that because i just i used to do apple music by myself but mm. my wife did spotify and it just made more sense to combine yeah in the plan so i do spotify now and uh i'm really worried about what my spotify wrapped or thing is gonna say because i tried their like virtual dj where it's like let's put together some stuff that you've listened to and i'm like man i'm all over the place because i was i was raised on country music i listened to a lot of oldies stuff uh, growing up and have a lot of 
fondness for that, but I mean, I like the gorillas a lot. I listen to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard when I have a project that like needs to be done quickly. All of not yesterday, but the day before, I just blasted the. I, well, you asked me how am I doing, and I said I'm blasting King Gizzard and trying to finish. I did this not product. actually get the joke, so I'm glad you explained no, it. No, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard has an album called Non Again Infinity, and it mm. is uh, you can play it on a loop, and all the tracks lead into one another, and the final track leads into the starting track. Yeah. So you can just listen to it on a loop. And it's kind of like the musical version of Tetris, where if I listen to it too much, it sort of just occupies my brain space even when I'm not listening to it. Uh, which is why I had to stop playing Tetris on Facebook years ago, because I was just thinking about Tetris <laughs> way too much. Uh, but that's so is it, that's an ADD yeah. problem. But I listen, I listen to kind of everything. As a joke, I put together a list called Productivity on Spotify, and it's just the Six Flags commercial song six times. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I nice. could even repeat it, but it's just the song six times. That's <laughs> funny. I, uh, <laughs> Venga Bus or whatever. Yeah, 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 yep, yep. That's, um, it, yeah. that's hilarious. I, uh, I listen. If I don't have the task done by the time I've listened to it six times, I'm not. It's not worth doing. Yeah. I listen to a lot of Lord Huron. I like them a lot. They came to Salt Lake and I went and saw them uh, at just the worst venue ever. It was all standing and we didn't stand close enough. And I was tall, but there was a taller person in front of me. And so I hardly got to see any of the concert, but it was really fun to just see them live uh, or hear them live, I guess. Uh, and then I listened to a lot of uh, Greta Van Fleet recently. Uh, just because I grew up liking Led Zeppelin a lot, and I think they're kind of coming into their own sound instead of just sounding like a uh, Led Zeppelin cover band. So yeah, you, you and I used to talk about uh, Fleetwood Mac a lot uh -huh. during the during the pandemic. That was a popular one. <laughs> yeah, my uh, wife grew up listening to a lot of Fleetwood Mac, and though we had very different musical tastes when we first got together. Fleetwood Mac was one of the things we could just we could both be like, this is good. And my my musical taste has broadened since then. I feel like I used to be a little bit of a snob about what I wouldn't wouldn't listen to. But if I have listened to a lot of something while I'm working, it's honestly refreshing to me to hear somebody else's playlist or some music like that I'm familiar with, but isn't exactly my taste because it's just like, oh, it's so nice to listen to some different things now and then too also my kids and i just listen to a lot of dumb dance music for like when yeah. i'm driving them to school and stuff my five-year-old's favorite song in the world is blow by kesha uh -huh. so i also know all the words to that um <laughs> we uh it was it was actually after the lord huron concert i was driving with my daughter and two of my sisters who went with me um to uh I should say my two sisters. I only have two. Um, we were driving home from Salt Lake, and there was a lowrider car that was just blasting some, like, funky, cool music. And uh, so I rolled down the windows on our Honda Odyssey minivan, which has, which has, like, a pretty incredible sound system. Like, people don't... People are sleeping on the Honda Odyssey. <laughs> it has a, it has it has a really good like bass and stuff. And so we turned on "Blow" by Kesha, and I rolled down the windows and just blasted it. And it was louder than their um, than the lowrider car. And people were laughing. I, I, at us. I like I like come you come for the art stream, but you get the lowdown on yeah. which minivan to buy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but uh. So yeah, we we listened to that. We listened to a bunch of goofy stuff, but yeah, not too bad. I'm gonna call this one good for right now and work on a background later, I think, and do some other. Yeah, thirteen stuff minutes over here. Okay. <laughs> Someone said, "How do you make lumpy lines look intentional? Like the frame for the stream is just sort of wobbly rectangle, but it looks great." Oh, uh, I don't know. It's just we don't we don't draw attention to that. 
Well, I think visual style, I want to say this correctly, visual style is kind of a combination of what you're good at and what your limitations are that you grow into. So if you pick and choose the things that you like to draw and you take pieces of them and incorporate them into your own style, it's still going to look like you did it even if you're trying to make your art work like Steve Ditko or, you know, it's still going to look like your stuff because of your limitations. Um, and I like drawing direct pen to paper because it's kind of unforgiving and it um, the paper and the tools kind of make decisions for you. It's one of the reasons that I don't draw line work digitally is just because I feel like it looks too clean. Like I'm just not going to get the same end result. Um, and I like to embrace things like paper texture and ink bleed and stuff. And that's from doing printmaking at school. One of our professors called it the inherent charm of the medium. Uh, and that, that, that just meant like when your print didn't come out perfect and there was a big hole in your linoleum or like the print roller was crooked. So it's a lot more strong on one side than another. That just means a person did it. And, and that's, that's fine. And I think especially, I don't know, I don't want to get into AI art during <laughs> the street. Well, let's, not, let's not today. Yeah. But I'll briefly say that's one of the ways that I feel like I can clock it. You know, if I'm scrolling through Pinterest, I'd notice the AI art stuff almost immediately because there's sort of mistakes that computers make that people don't make and mistakes that people make that computers don't make. And, um, Maybe that'll change eventually, but I, I just, I want, I want to be in that human element team. So, um, did you have a, there's a, one of the master painters, they later figured out that he, um, he drew everything weird, tall and thin because they, they realized that he had been developing astigmatism through his thirties. Oh, wow. And so he was, that was just how he interpreted the world because that's how he saw it. And, uh, I thought that was really so well, I think really like Monet had vision problems that he came into later in his life and, uh -huh. you know, it just made him a better impressionist painter. painter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when, uh, and I don't mean that as an insult. I see, uh, I mean, one of the funny things about doing this on a stream is that I can look up every now and then and see my own face, which is not something I regularly do when I draw. So it's funny to see me squinting or making facial expressions um, sure. when I'm doing certain things because oh I, I actually thought that was your just your expression <laughs> that's just my face uh, so uh, PJ Darker fellow Honda Odyssey owner has asked uh, do, you, do you find a lot of the people do you stumble into artists taking inspiration from your work now do I struggle with artists taking inspiration from... No, no. Do you stumble into artists taking... Do I stumble you should, into it? Do I struggle yeah, yeah, or you should, stumble? You can, be, you can struggle with them, or you can be inspired by them. I don't struggle. I defeat them. In, you defeat them. Oh. <laughs> in Mortal Kombat. No, I think it's fun to see people who um, Street art. Are, are inspired by it. My favorite, when people do fan art and stuff, I like it when people do fan art and they kind of make it their own. I, yeah. I see when people are trying to like imitate my style exactly... And that's a little bit weird because then that just, that, that seems like, I don't know. And that's different for if it's like you're, um, you're kind of exploring a style and finding out what you like about it. But as long as they're not trying to like sell it, yeah, then that's, then that's fine. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been interesting to see after root success, the amount of games that, had anthropomorphic animals for a while maybe yeah. maybe that's maybe that's still the case but um i think it's still in the upswing now we're gonna now you're gonna see mushrooms and cottage core for a couple of years okay we got to get ahead of the curve on that the leviathan yeah. is now a mushroom well i tried to make a cottage core game of snow tell tell nick here we are tell nick it's the leviathan's a mushroom now okay i'll put some spots on it get on that uh yeah. my daughter made their first D, &D character yesterday Oh, nice! And they and they uh, they 
this I said as a ranger, one of the things you can do is you can get an animal companion. And I got really excited about that. And then they asked if uh, we could do a, a if it could be a, a, a anthropomorphic mushroom. It was their <laughs> pet, and I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I don't, you know, like well, I'm not gonna tell you no. Uh, and then. And then they got sad when they found out you can't, you don't get the beast until level three. So I said, well, maybe the mushroom's with you now, but they're not big enough to fight yet. And then at level <laughs> three, they'll pop. You can take Very Find sad. Familiar at level one and have, uh, yeah. And but then the beast companion can be at level three. There's, um, oh, that's funny. Uh, one that's of my daughters does D&D club at school. And first of all, yeah. I want to do D&D club at school. If I'm ever hard to contact on a Thursday afternoon, it's because I'm I secretly You're am playing D&D, away yeah. to play D and D at the junior high. Um, but her character is a ranger too. So. I uh, I uh, yeah, they, they just came home from school one day and they're like, "I want to play D and D." I was like, "Okay, well we can set that up." And they're like, "Can we play tomorrow?" And I'm like, "Uh, <laughs> maybe." Maybe twelve year old Patrick could have pulled that off tomorrow, but forty uh, year old Patrick's gonna need. Need some time, so we we invited one of her friends and and uh, and her friend's dad, so we're all gonna play on Saturday. So, nice. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm actually kind of waffling about what I'm gonna run still. Um, I was gonna run Fallon Driver, and I think it because it's very dungeony and very like basic story, like mm-hmm. basic. Here's the beats of D and D. Um, but the Wild Man on the Witchlight looks pretty cool for like. Sorry, sorry, stream. You're gonna have to hear my D and D. Uh, not hot takes, and. Uh, Oh, I'm writing cozy I think down. I think I'm just gonna find a random dungeon map though and just kinda do what I do, which is extemporaneously run things based on what's in the rooms. Gotcha. Oh, I'm I'm getting a con- the producer just contacted me. Hey, did I said someone has asked an artist on Fiverr to copy my style? I am I'm shaking my head at you. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting a Wag of the finger. <laughs> Fiverr. Okay, you're for one thing, you're gonna get what you pay for. <laughs> you're gonna say, draw me a picture of a thing, and then they're gonna go on Google and find the picture of the thing and sell it to you for five bucks, or use a a thing of templates from their computer. But also, it's just kind of exploitative. Don't use Fiverr, please. Um. More so than animal anthropomorphic animals being in games, I'm seeing a lot of four-letter words being used. Yes, for game titles. Stop it's... it! They're all ours yeah. now. They're all yeah. Yep. As the as semi cooperative predicted, if the world will end if I run out of titles. So we just mm, yeah. You're all taking your life in your own hands. Luckily, <laughs> luckily, there's plenty of people at the company with four-letter names, so. Yeah, so when we can we, start using those. Yeah, when yeah. we get to a game called Kyle, you'll know we're fully at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, tackle wrist fatigue. I don't know. You just do a lot of things, right? Uh, wrist Kyle fatigue? Goes for, Kyle goes for a walk every morning. I used to go for like a hike, like an hour and a half yeah. before my kids woke up. It has been too dark to do that. As I posted a while ago, uh, if I have to get up my daughter at 7 and the sun doesn't come up until 8, <laughs> yeah, it means that I'm hiking with a headlamp on just thinking, cougars, 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 <laughs> the whole time I'm hiking. And it, while I might get the physical benefit from that, I might even sweat a little bit more than usual. I am no longer reaping the emotional benefit of hiking in the morning <laughs> if I'm worrying about cougars the entire time. Um, but, uh, no, for, when I come down to work in the morning, cause I, my office is just in the basement of our house. I, I do lots of stretches and things like that. Cause like, I don't know if you get stress nightmares about like, what if I smash my hand under a rock or something like that, then you know that you got to take care of it. And I'm sure the carpal tunnel monster or something will eventually claim me, but I do try really hard to make sure my hands are okay <laughs> and, I think and stretch them and yeah. everything else, both before and after I work. So. It's stress for me. Brings on the carpal tunnel. Mm-hmm. Like I just start tensing up then, and then just yeah, getting off the computer. I used to 
in my twenties. I was I used to be a professional programmer and I really wrestled with being just on the keyboard all day. Mm-hmm. So and my wrists are screwed up forever now, but uh, I can't open some things, but that's all right. Yeah, uh, the root movie powerful yeah. grip from turning off and on orchard uh water <laughs> when I was oh, a shit. Kid. <laughs> you're like i don't go back to the trunk for the uh, truck for the wrench i'm just gonna do it with my hands yeah yeah, yeah. uh sorry uh, root the, movie. the root movie is uh, uh i don't know if they're really I, I don't really think i really talk about officially um no, i'm sorry everybody you've heard my phone um it's been moving along we have more people interested uh you know you just keep you just keep fighting your way up that ladder until yeah. someone someone at the top says yes. Some and, of those uh, things take a long time. Some of those things yep. take even longer during justified strikes. Yeah. And... Strike, COVID, it all it'll add up. Yeah. yeah. So but it's uh it is a thing. If it happens, I'll look pleasantly surprised. I'll say it that way. Me too. I will not be personally animating any sort of root root <laughs> property. That would be a case where we'd have to say, okay, you'd have to make it look like I did it, because yeah, ain't nobody. I did say I, I haven't I haven't pitched this to Kyle yet outside of a sentence or two, but I did say it was if it does if it goes to like April, March or April, and we're still not there. Um, I think we should take the script that they're working on and turn it to like a graphic novel hmm. and find an illustrator to work on that. That's not Kyle because Kyle doesn't have time to draw. Kyle doesn't have draw to, time to draw a graphic novel, and graphic novels I think require. You could do it, no doubt. Yeah. But it's like it's like asking a novelist to write to to write a technical manual. Well, and certain there is the novelist out there that say, can do it. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. not to say that like what I'm doing is a higher class of of art or anything, but it is. Yeah. The amount of work that goes into doing a graphic novel would cut in so substantially to the work that I would need to do for yeah. games uh, yeah. that it would not be a good exchange of time resources. I We have a fast rate of making money with Kyle's wrist. I have, I have, uh, yeah, I said it better. You said it in a crude way. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, I, I love graphic novels. I love, uh, the only example I think of is Delicious in Dungeon. I love yeah. those, those, that manga. And, um, I love the art so much, but I have to admit that even as a person that really appreciates the art, I flip through those at the speed of reading. I, I read the text and I look at the pictures for context and I keep going. And yeah. with board games, you're spending a little bit more time with the objects and things. And so there's sort of like a value proposition that way too, where it's like, I want to be drawing the things that people are spending a lot of time with. And a graphic novel is different in terms of like, this would be one frame of a splash page and you go Vroom, and turn the page immediately after it yeah, gives yeah. you the beat of like how long it would take to actually happen. And it's just a different, it's a different beast completely. That's why I Word read all my comics twice. One to appreciate. I read, I, read, I blast you for the story. And then if I really like the art, I'll go back and, and look yeah. at the art more carefully. Not every comic book for sure. I mean, I read comics for kids. I'm excited about Dungeon is uh, the delicious in Dungeon. Also, did we lock up? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, you're frozen on my screen. That's oh, fine. let's see. Am I working now? <laughs> uh, I it's just, it looks like you're still you're still frozen on my screen. Yeah, I'm excited maybe, about the anime because I don't Twitch, have to read the whole manga. I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, I think I think it's actually me. I, I think everyone else is fine. Okay. So that's fine. I'll just have to pretend that you're sneering at me because you look like you're sneering at me right now. That's just my resting dad face. <laughs> Disapproval. I I uh, I restarted the window. We're fine. Okay. Yeah, no, no one's giving us grief about that. You're the first person, PJ. That what? what? Oh, that giving I heard. Us grief about the Hawaii, the Hawaii turtles wearing <laughs> pants and the and the root turtles not wearing pants. It's okay. They're not. There, there will be no crossover event that I know of. These two, <laughs> two properties. Shh. 
<laughs> well, there shouldn't be because there's humans in Ahoy, so we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there may be a massive scale issue when we have the crossover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What if, what if there was a crossover and all the Hoi animals were just enormous compared to the root characters? That would be funny. Yeah. Just like uh, oh, there would be like a Corvid that's like this big and then one of the seagull characters from Ahoy that's like the height of a, <laughs> of a human. The height of a person. Yeah. What happened to you? <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry to bump my... I didn't make anybody seasick. All right, so in 10 years, when y'all pitch me a Smash Brothers style game that uses all of our characters. Until then, don't talk about crossover events. Okay. And then Deal. Kyle's going to be like, Kyle, you got to draw the knight. And you're like, uh, uh oh. <laughs> People act like, oh, you know. Maybe I've forgotten about that or something. But the real issue is that I look at the games that I've worked on before and think, I want to redraw all of them. <laughs> and that would also not be time oh, effective. No, that would be not good. all. Yeah. Not I think all if we do, just... I think if we do a vast second edition, we'd want to read. We we yeah. just want to like not not for your sake, not for like freshen it not up. Not because I'm sitting there. Not that I'm sitting there going, oh man, this thing sucked. Let's do a new one. But it more just like, yeah, I mean, people want to see a new side of it or a new part of it. Yeah. You know? Well, and we all, that's the side effect of trying to grow and improve is that you look back at the things you've yeah. done before and say, I know how I would do that differently now. You know, there's well, even I'll... stuff that I know how to do in Photoshop now to for my coloring process that I didn't know how to do when I did Vast. So I look back at oh, some sure. of that and I see like, the very slightest bit of a JPEG artifact that I missed on a file sure. on a card art that is like not even noticeable on the actual card art, but on the file, I can look at it and say, God, I wish somebody would have told me about this process <laughs> before, you know, something that I would do differently now, just technically, not even artistically, but yep. Did you just sketch and ink the entire movie scene of a drawing in 20 minutes? Too good. Thanks. One of the tricky things about killer whales is from a distance, the big white thing looks like their eye. And it's not... Which is intentional, right? Probably. Yeah, so I, some it's, probably, it's probably to warn out. I mean, what's gonna, if there's other predators for them. Well, like a cat has those fold, like the part where the skin shows more on their forehead partially let sound through but mm. partially because when they're if they fall asleep while watching their prey it still looks like there's two big eyes in the dark looking at the prey mm. i have a sleeping cat right here next to me should we test that theory look look at your cat i just wait don't, i mean but you have you, you have people eyes <laughs> so you can tell <laughs> don't judge i'm yeah, just still see an eye in there yeah mm -mm. this is the realities of yeah, mouse size aren't as good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, it's a little bit past three. It is. That, that cat is chilling. That's Tilly. Do you have any? Do you want to have anything else you want to talk about before you go? Otherwise, Lita and I are gonna go work You're on the bounce for a bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, just if you haven't backed a hoy, do it. You can get the base game. We'll send it to you, even if you don't have that. I imagine yeah. if you're watching this, you're aware of the campaign. Ahoy. <laughs> well, watch it. Ahoy is so good. Get it. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'm very excited. I'm enjoying the new factions a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, come see us at Pax U if you're in the yeah, area. Pax if you're going. Yeah. I'll be in That'll Philadelphia. Be uh and it will be it'll be fun so come say hi all right hey bye all right take, bye take care everybody <laughs>